Hey guys, my name is Kevin Murphy and welcome to my channel called Narcissistic Abuse, Learning Who I Am Again. In today's video, I want to talk about narcissistic scapegoating. How in a narcissistic family system, there's always the person that um, takes all the blame, all the shame, and all the abuse of the uh, family dysfunction um, in the system. So in narcissistic family systems, there's always roles that we play in those, in those family systems. So in the narcissistic family system, you have your golden child, you have your um, mascot or the person that is the funny guy, the person that is the, um, that draws a lot of funny attention to themselves. Then you have the person that is like the lost child, the one that is forgotten, nobody really pays attention to. That lost child kind of stays out of the peripheral of the narcissistic parent to stay safe and to protect themselves. And then you have the scapegoat child, which is the one who can do no right, the one that is constantly... Um, told that they're not good enough, that they're the problem child, that um, everything is wrong because of this scapegoated child. Normally, the scapegoated child is very aware of the dysfunction of the narcissistic family system. They are um, considered the whistleblower of the narcissistic family system. They um, are the ones that normally stand up to the narcissistic parent. They are the ones that have the guts to speak their mind, to tell the narcissistic parent or whoever the narcissist is in that system um, how they feel. The, the scapegoat child is normally incredibly sensitive. They have a lot of empathy for other people, for the especially even the ones that are in the family system. They will uh, go to bat for some of the people who may have, may be the target of that narcissist in that moment because one of the things that you'll learn in narcissistic family systems is that the roles often shift depending on the mood of the narcissist. So the narcissist may you, the, the golden child may have done something to piss the narcissist off, and that narcissist will temporarily shift some of the some of the roles and that narcissist may make the scapegoat the temporary golden child until that golden child has come to their senses so to speak and apologized and continue to be the narcissist's um, golden child again and then the then the roles shift back that scapegoat goes from being the golden child back to being the scapegoat again. And then the status quo comes back to play uh, all over again. Um, another thing about the scapegoat child is that they tend to um, want therapy. They want to know, they want answers. They want to know why the family system is as dysfunctional as it is. They want to know why they feel so hated, why they feel so broken, and why their self-esteem is so low. Uh, generally, these scapegoated children um, go on to be very successful adults um, once they get healed, once they go to therapy, once they... Um, start adapting some of the interventions that they learn in therapy. Some of these scapegoated children decide to walk away from the family system entirely, or they decide to set strong boundaries on how they want to interact with their families. They choose the kind of interaction that is comfortable for them. The scapegoat child is um, often ignored. Uh, their needs are are um, invalidated. They are not taking an interest in. Um, that scapegoat child may have had certain friendships or certain situations that uh, that mean a, mean a great deal to them, and that narcissistic parent pays absolutely no attention to them. That scapegoated child may have made a lot of um, 
have worked hard in their lives, uh, general, general, generally to win that parent over. Uh, that scapegoated child also has some of the, even though they are fully aware of the dysfunctions in that family system, they are just like anybody else in that family system, trying to win over the parent's uh, validation, approval, and love of them. It's just that the difference between the scapegoat and the golden child, the golden child is more fully aware and um, consciously tries to win over that parent's uh, love and approval, where the scapegoat is unconscious and subconscious and not fully aware of what they're doing. If the scapegoat is not careful and is not, um, and does not get any help, or seek any help for um, the abuse that they have suffered from at the at you know from that narcissistic caregiver, they may form different addictions. Whether it's addiction to pornography, addiction to alcohol, addiction to drugs, addiction to other vices, um, in order to numb that pain and that. Um, and the things that, that they have experienced as a child. Um, and everybody's story is different. No, not everybody has the same story. Some people's stories are a lot less horrific. Some people's stories are a lot more horrific. But um, the scapegoat is, is the person that the, is, excuse the expression, the family shitball. Um, the, the scapegoat is the person that the family goes to for advice, money, for um, just the person that 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 uh, takes the brunt of everything. That scapegoat may be asked to do very inappropriate or very um, just things that just things that are are just out of the norm, things that are um, egregious. So you may live <clears throat> 5,000 miles from, the, from, from your narcissistic family. You might be the scapegoated child that says, I'm done, I, you know, I don't, you know, I'm distancing myself from my family. I'm gonna move um, miles, thousands of miles away. Um, to the opposite end of the country or out of the country, whatever. And, you know, that that family dynamic system, because you you have learned that you have no boundaries, you have learned that your boundaries mean nothing or they're non-existent, you uh, that parent or that or that that family system may ask you to drop everything you're doing to fly home because um, so and so and so is sick, or um, you may live in the same you may live within this within the same state of that narcissistic family system, and they may ask you to drop everything you're doing to take them to the store or to take them. Um, to another state or to take them to a friend's house. Now that narcissistic family um, may be aware that you have other things to do that day, or you may have other things going on um, that afternoon or something like that. They don't care. They expect for you to drop everything you're doing and play the proverbial taxi for them. In the process of you playing proverbial taxi to these people, they um, don't offer you gas money. They don't offer to. Uh, they don't offer to pay for you, pay for your lunch or pay for dinner or anything like that. Because to them, you are the family toilet bowl. You are the person that they don't respect anyway. And they also see that your boundaries and, and your your desires and what you want mean nothing to them. As a scapegoat child, you are completely, you're not so much invisible as disrespected. And um, as a scapegoat child, that creates a lot of self-esteem issues. You start to feel like you don't matter. You start to bring those kinds of um, 
feelings of inferiority and low self-esteem or lack of boundaries into other relationships. You start to look for other um, people that are somewhat similar or look for other situations that are familiar to you. And because that situation is familiar to you, you feel out of place and you feel like you're not, you, you, you feel like a fish out of water because um, you've been, you've been groomed to be disrespected. You've been groomed to be hated. Uh, generally the, 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 the scapegoated child is hated. The narcissistic family system or the narcissistic uh, head honcho has taught other members of the family to hate you. You feel like you don't, you, you feel like the, the sibling golden child um, who you may have once had a close relationship with is very cold and distant and, and cut off from you. You may have brought this to the attention of the sibling or other members of the narcissistic family system, and you're met with disdain. You are told that you are causing problems. You are told that you are creating drama because you are trying to express yourself. Um, the thing that the narcissistic family system wants to do is to stifle you. They want you to keep your mouth shut. And generally, the narcissistic um, family scapegoat is the whistleblower. They are the ones that call out all the dysfunction in the family system. And they are um, they are the ones that will call out some of the, the dysfunction that, that takes place in this family system. So you will go to that to that sibling. And generally, these um, um, nar these these uh, golden children become narcissists themselves. They become very self-absorbed. They become uh, self-important. They think that the world revolves around them. And you may try to establish a stronger relationship with that sibling or with that person that has hurt you. Um, and you're, like I said, you're met with disdain. You're met with, oh, you're just trying to create tr trouble. You're trying to create drama because over the years, that narcissistic caregiver, that narcissistic parent or whoever that narcissist is in the family system has taught that sibling to hate the scapegoat, has been taught to hate you. And so what happens is, that golden child, like I said, is conscious with the golden child, is subconscious with the scapegoat. That golden child wants that parent or wants that narcissistic care provider to love them and to be, and they want to be in their good graces. And so they will do anything to make sure that happens. So if hating you is something that will bring the bring that narcissist closer to them they're going to do that no matter how much you try to be uh, compassionate to that person no matter how much you try to say that you love them or you care for the relationship or you want that 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 uh, dynamic to be strong again it's not going to happen and the reason why it won't happen is because that golden child, it wants to be loved by that by that narcissistic caregiver. And so as a result, that scapegoated child is further traumatized because not only did they go through um, being the family toilet bowl uh, with you know with with the with the parent and with other family members in that in that dynamic, but now they have lost a important sibling relationship. And so that scapegoat is, 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 feels alone. They feel lonely and they feel like they don't have anybody in their corner. And this is, this is devastating for them. And a lot of, and the scapegoated child who is not healed or not going to therapy or not um, taking care of their self will either try harder and harder and harder to be um, accepted by this uh, family system, or they will try to um, 
find other partners or other people that will uh, accept them. But they won't find partners who are healthy. They will find partners that remind them of that narcissistic family dynamic because that scapegoated child is only used to being treated poorly. They're only used to being treated like crap. They're only used to being treated like they don't matter. So if they find somebody that is treating them with respect, treating them kind, um, desiring to have a two-way relationship with them, they don't, they, you know, a, a scapegoated, an unhealed scapegoated child will either sabotage that or find ways to kind of like distance themselves from that person because they are not healed enough or feel that they deserve to be treated with respect. So um, these are just examples of what it means and what it looks like to be the scapegoated child in a narcissistic family dynamic. You feel alone, even in the room filled with people. You feel like you are just completely like you, you feel you, you feel like you have you you feel like your boundaries and, and who you are is is non-existent and then you start to not you you start to deny who you are as a person in order to make them feel comfortable in order to please them you start to be you start to take on codependent features you start to take on codependent um ways in relationships because you have learned to people please you have learned to to try harder over and over and over and over again. You're you're watering that dead plant and you you, you have to set you it, it comes to a time where you have to set look at that plant and say it's dead. It's not going to revive revive back no matter how much water I put on that plant. So this was a video on narcissistic scapegoating children. Um, as I said in my last video, if you have any uh, requests or any um, topics that you would like for me to do a video on, please uh, look at the description box, email me, um, no charge. Um, I don't charge for video requests or for videos like this because this is this is healing and this is um, us being aware of the things that have happened to us and um, trying to gain awareness so that way we can grow as, as healthier individuals. So please stay tuned for more videos and um, thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.